<laughs> what should be done to end the unrest in DRC and all African countries' extremist rising? In fact, that I think is a very fundamental question, and it allows me to answer all the other questions. Mm. As we speak now, and before even I say what we speak about, this year, the year 2020, was declared by the AU as the year of silencing the guns. And the whole idea of silencing the guns was informed by the realization that you cannot have any meaningful economic development, any meaningful political stability, any meaningful uh, social cohesion if people are fighting. And where are people fighting? People are fighting in the Sahelian region, you know, because it is in your neighborhood. People are fighting in northern Mali, people are fighting in Mauritania, People are fighting in the Cameroons, people are fighting in Burkina Faso, northern part of it, people are fighting in Central African Republic, people are fighting in the eastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo, there is conflict in Darfur, in the Sudan and in the Nuba Mountains, there is conflict as we know in, uh, northern, uh, in northern Mozambique as we speak now. And right just two weeks ago, we now know that there is a conflict that has emerged in Ethiopia, the central government, federal government fighting Tigray. And other things are beginning to happen in that area. I hold the view that Africa and a number of African countries must be renegotiated. And this is not incompatible with the unity of Africa. I remember John Garang de Mabior when he was fighting for the dignity and self-determination of the people of South and Southern Sudan. He told the Khartoum government, make unity attractive. Make us feel that we are equal citizens in Sudan. Why do you want to make us Muslims? Why do you want to make us Arabs? Was God foolish to make us dinkas and nuers and to make us black? Isn't God a God of diversity? Can't we, in our diversity, live in one country with respect, he asked. And the same argument is the argument that the people are asking in the Cameroons, telling the BIA administration, can't we live in dignity? Why must we quarrel about languages that are not our own, French and English? And indeed, how many people speak French and English in Yaounde or in, 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 other, in Boya? So I think that one of the most urgent things that must be done now is for countries to renegotiate. There is no one single formula. In Nigeria, we see, when you listen to Namdi, uh, Mazi, Namdi, Kanu, you hear the IPOB, you hear the Odudua Republic, mm -hmm. even in Ghana now, you hear the former Togoland, yeah. in the Democratic Republic of Congo, we have so many of these uh, groups that are emerging. And let me tell you, the Europeans love it. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, one of the busiest air spaces in Africa, private jets lifting uranium, lifting gold, lifting coltan. And I think if I were ever to work at the African Union, there should only, in the, two meetings, three meetings, meeting number one with only a single agenda item, we have recognized all the problems of Africa. We know them. They have been documented. Therefore, what should we do to solve those problems? The next meeting, agenda item number two, how should we do it? And the next meeting, within what time frame? And I would, in that context, convene a meeting that includes all the secessionist forces in Africa, all of them, all the rebel movements. You invite them and give them security so that they are able to explain to governments what they want. Let them tell us what is it, what is it, why can't we work? Because as long as we don't have peace and stability and security and we have insecurity and we have all these conflicts, we cannot grow. You cannot grow in an environment where there is insecurity. And I can secure it for you because maybe you might have something on your mind that you think you have to share. But no one will come to you and tell you that Prof, you need to tell us this. Yes. You see, so Prof, I think it's very, very necessary. We'll organize that because I, one of the things that I believe in, 
you are doing a good thing and many young people are doing good thing what we do is to strengthen and energize you and and uh, that is our contribution to the good work that you are doing Prof, I, I, i will help you send a lot of thank you out there. i'm humbled by uh, that and um, you said something that went viral and yeah. everyone is saying i should ask you said the day that nigeria will wake up africa will be great you know one in every five africans is a nigerian by nationality and i described it as the african heat and sars has gone underground is in comatose and the government thinks that it has solved the problem no that was a statement by young nigerians that we are dissatisfied that there are certain things that we want done I hope that the administration in Nigeria will in a very programmatic manner begin to address those issues. And when I say the day Nigeria wakes up, if you are 250 million people, some of the most educated men and women in the world are Nigerians. There are more Nigerian doctors in the United States of America and the United Kingdom than there are in Nigeria. There are Nigerian engineers, there are Nigerian teachers, there are Nigerian business people. I mean Nigeria is the engine. The Nigerian population is larger than the population of all ECOWAS countries combined. That tells you that if you make Nigeria great it will be a magnet. And that is why I think Nigeria deliberate effort must be made to make Nigeria stable and Nigeria